Is it really that difficult to use and take care of a lawnmower? From my experience repairing them, it would seem that it's more complicated than most consumers can handle. I mean, it's not like you're building a race car and then making sure it doesn't break the first time it goes out onto the track. It's pretty much the same for your mower except there is no track, just your yard, and this one is completely legal to do each and every spring, summer, and fall. So if it's so easy to do, then why do so many consumers get it wrong? In today's video, we're going to look at this Toro lawnmower, and the problem is that after a long storage, it now smokes when the engine is running. Now, I've already made a video about this mower, and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. And I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about the consistent issues consumers have with taking care of and using their lawnmowers. I know that sounds pretty simple to do, but you'd be surprised to know just how many people get it wrong and with terrible consequences too. So I'm going to start with what you should do and then break down how each simple step gets mutilated by consumers. And if you think going battery electric is the answer, then you might be surprised by my answer at the end of the video. So it's the beginning of spring here, and believe it or not, some of the local hardware stores are already putting items on sale. So if you want to save a lot of money, this would be the time to buy. You then come back home with a giant cardboard box, and inside it is your new mower. You take it out of the box, grab the instructions, and put on the parts that it tells you to, and then you sit down and go over the all-important owner's manual. You'll then amuse yourself with the information that you hopefully already know. The reason is because you just spent three dollars to $500 on this cardboard box and you're not going to throw away your hard-earned and well-deserved money down the drain. Now, after looking over it for several minutes, you're ready to go through the steps to start it up. The first step after getting the handle in place along with the pull rope is to add engine oil, being careful not to overfill it. Then you pour gasoline into the fuel tank, being careful yet again not to overfill it. You then set the cutting height, attach the bag if needed, then you try starting it. Now after mowing, there are no directions on changing the break-in oil, but having experience on your side, you change the oil after the first mow. Clean off any clumps of grass above and below the mowing deck. You then allow the engine to cool down and then you put it away so it can be used again in the next week or so. So how difficult was that? Apparently, it's extremely tedious for some. The most important step when getting your new mower ready to start is to add the engine oil. So here's where it goes wrong. Now, I can understand that sometimes you get pretty excited just to get the mower started so you can mow that you completely forget to add the engine oil. Then there are the other times when there's more than one person helping to take it out of the box that you assume the other person must have added the engine oil and it's ready to mow. So when that does happen, it's understandable. But what happens most often is a serious miscommunication and it starts with the manual. Correct me if I'm wrong, but at the factory, they have to test the engine just to make sure that it will at least start and run, and after confirming that, they will then drain as much oil as possible, probably through the fill tube since it's easier. Then they'll send it down the line so it can be installed to the mowing deck, and then the rest of the hardware can be installed on it, and the mower is then boxed up and shipped out of the factory. What sometimes happens is that the consumer will pull out the dipstick and see that there's oil on it and say, oh, there's already oil in it, and then proceed to the next step, which is to add gasoline to the fuel tank. Start it up, and then about 10 to 20 minutes later, the engine will start to get slower and slower until it finally stops altogether, at which point the proud owner will try and start it and realize that the pull rope is stuck. What happens next will just amaze you. The owner will then take the mower back to the store where they bought it from along with the receipt and then ask for either a refund or a new mower. The store will take it back and then give them what they want and then the consumer will either get a new mower or take that money and go to a different store to get a battery electric mower because environment. It's unfortunate but this happens more often than you realize. Now sometimes it doesn't happen that way and that's when people like me will step in. Of course some consumers will realize that they had done something wrong but only after reading the owner's manual. 
in the manual it might state how there might be residual oil in the engine and also on the dipstick. The manual will then ask you to wipe off the dipstick and then check it again. That's when the consumer will realize they did not follow the instructions and that they ruined a perfectly good mower. They'll then put it on the curb to be picked up and then go buy a new mower and by this time they'll remember to add the oil but this is when the next issue comes up. Now most mowers will come with a bottle of oil that has exactly the amount that you'll need. You simply add the entire bottle to the engine, right? Or are you supposed to add just enough to get it to the full mark on the dipstick? Now if you're really resourceful, you'll look up the engine specs and find out the oil capacity and then check how much is in the bottle. After that you can figure out how much to add to the engine or you can do what the instructions tell you to do. If you hadn't already figured it out, there's a theme going on here, but I won't say it out loud just yet. So what sometimes happens is that the consumers will add too much oil to the engine, and even though it would seem that not enough oil was bad, then too much oil should be much better, right? Unfortunately, that's not the case, so let me explain. Most small engines on lawnmowers are set up with an oil slinger to get oil where it needs to be. That oil is supposed to be at a certain level for it to work correctly. But when the oil is above that level, it can cause the engine to work against the oil, such as the crankshaft or piston, having to fight against it. And if the oiling system doesn't work like it should, it can cause the engine to overheat, smoke, or worse yet, hydrolock when the oil seeps past the piston rings and starts to fill up the combustion chamber. I know it sounds like it's impossible, but too much oil is just as bad as too little oil, so make sure you keep the oil above the minimal level and below the max. Now does that sound difficult to do? Because for some, it seems like it's impossible to do. If you want a tip, just take your time and do it once. So even though it might have taken a few mowers, you finally figured out how to correctly add oil to your engine, but does that only apply to the oil? No, it doesn't. Believe it or not, if you put too much gasoline in your fuel tank, you might have a few issues. When filling up the tank with gasoline, remember not to overfill it. What I mean by that is to not fill it until it's level with the opening of the gas cap. The gas cap is designed to allow air to vent into the tank. As gasoline leaves the tank, air needs to be able to enter the tank. And if it doesn't do that, the engine will stop running a few minutes after starting it, and it won't start, unless you open the gas cap to allow air to get into the tank. Now, this used to happen to me as a kid and I never could figure out why, at least until now. After you check the gas tank by taking off the gas cap, this will typically allow just enough fuel to leave the tank that it will drop the fuel level and allow the cap to work the way it's supposed to. Now if I had read the owner's manual, it would have shown or stated to leave about half an inch of headroom below the top of the fuel tank to keep from having stalling issues. Now most just fill it to the brim and keep right on mowing, not realizing the issue they could have by doing this. Yet again, if they had just read the manual, this could have been avoided. So if you hadn't figured it out, most of the problems all stem from consumers not reading the owner's manual. It's just amazing all the issues you could avoid by reading it. It's funny though how many videos I've seen where someone will unbox something and when they get to the manual, they'll say manuals are not for them and then toss it off camera. Then when they have issues, instead of reading the manual, they'll look for a video explaining the problem to them. I just realized this, but if they had a video manual, this might solve these issues, instead of having a hard copy in print, which is apparently so last century. So once you finally figured out what you've been doing wrong all this time by adding oil either not enough or too much, and then realizing you can actually put too much gasoline into the tank, you should be in the clear when it comes to using your second or third brand new mower, and you can't go wrong when it comes to storing it. You simply just do your last mow of the season and then put it away for four to six months and you should be good for the next season. Or am I wrong? Yet again, if you had read or even glanced at your owner's manual, I think you'd find your answer. I'm not going to spoil it too much for you, and if you already know, then you're ahead of the rest of the class. But if you really want to know, either find your owner's manual, or if you bought yours used, then search online for your model's manual, glance over it, and I think you might be surprised by what it says. Now if you wanted to take a guess as to what those steps would be, it would have to do something with the gasoline in the tank and probably some of the grass around the mower. There are extra steps that aren't mentioned in the manual which if taken wouldn't hurt either.
So am I saying that I know everything there is to know about my specific lawn mower or about the mowers I work on? Nope, not at all. But I know just enough to keep me from having the issues that I typically see in the mowers I work on, and to be honest, I had to learn them the hard way. Unfortunately, I wasn't told what to do either when it came to taking care of a lawn mower. So I'm not trying to pick on anyone except myself, and it's because of the experiences I had up until now that I know what I know. I just wish someone would have told me to read the manual years ago. So take it from me, it's not too late to figure things out or to get it right. Hopefully you won't have to learn the way I did, but if you did, I wouldn't blame you. If I had to guess, the corporations that make and sell these products also don't mind if you make these easy mistakes as well because it just means more sales for them and you're the one paying for it. And for those of you who decided to go battery electric because you don't want to think or even worry about filling oil and nasty gasoline, the problems aren't over when it comes to batteries. I hope you weren't looking for me to tell you what you need to know about battery care and maintenance because if you thought you could stop caring once you went battery, I'd read your owner's manual again if you hadn't already thrown it away. Look, after having had several mowers and worked on hundreds more, I'll admit that I don't look at the manuals anymore because most of them are all the same. However, if I came across something that I've never worked on before, believe me, I'm going to take a look at the manual. So my question is, have you ever read your owner's manual for your lawn mower or for any of your equipment that you own or even just use maybe at work? I know it took me some time before I realized why they even bothered putting one in the box and the best answer is liability. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.